I made a little bit of an impulse buy. What's up guys, Jake here, and today we're gonna talk about the rarest guitar I've ever owned. It's right here. This bright red Super Strat with a blacked out neck is the rarest guitar I have ever owned. Now, you're probably asking yourself, what is this guitar? Well, I'm gonna tell you all about it in this video, uh, a little bit about how I became the owner of this guitar, and of course i'm going to play the guitar a little bit for you so to start things off the bat this is a brad gillis signature fernandez made in japan so if you don't know who brad gillis is why don't you know who brad gillis is brad gillis is a guitarist that kind of flies under the radar but he uh he first got really famous playing with ozzy osbourne replacing randy rhodes after his death <laughs> Uh, and then he went off to be in the world famous band Night Ranger with, of course, hits like Sister Christian, Don't Tell Me You Love Me, and just hit after hit, in my opinion. Here's me with Brad. Don't I look like I'm about to puke? I was real nervous. Back to the guitar. So anyway, he signed with Fernandez Guitars uh, back in the 80s. If you don't know who Fernandez is, you probably know who Bernie is. Bernie makes copies of Gibson Les Pauls uh, with the Bernie headstock, uh, and they were mainly sold overseas. Uh, you don't really see a ton of them in the US. Fernandez is owned by Bernie. They're actually the same company. Fernandez makes the Strat copies. Uh, so his signature Strat was designed and sold by Fernandez. Now, they made a bunch of different models of these guitars, okay? This is the lower end one. Like the ST-155s are the higher end ones like Brad actually used. Uh, and the big difference with those is nicer pickups and the trem, they actually sourced Floyd Rose prototype styles. This one has a single locking, not, I don't wanna say knockoff, but I'll say off brand trem with fine tuners. And uh, it doesn't say Brad Gillis model on the headstock. You might notice something weird about the headstock of this guitar. It's signed by the man himself, Mr. Brad Gillis. So supposedly, Brad doesn't even seem to really know how many of his signatures were produced. It was very few. Um, I believe it's under 100. I believe he's even thrown around the number 50. However, the reason why I think it's closer to 100, I actually tried to reach out to Brad through his website and Instagram and kind of get some information before I made this video, actually before I even bought the guitar. He never got back to me. I have to say I'm a little disappointed. World famous guitar player not answering back small time YouTuber in his basement? Ridiculous, dude. No, I'm just kidding. I'm sure you got much better things to do than uh, to answer me about this guitar. Um, but supposedly he, there were 50 of this type made that he signed the headstock. They don't say Brad Gillis model or the SD-155s, I believe, actually have his signature up here, but it's not his actual signature. It's like a printing of it. This is his actual signature with a Sharpie pen. So supposedly 50 of these were made and he signed the headstock of all of them. 
Uh, that is a confirmed story by Brad. I was a little nervous when I saw this guitar because I got super excited, but it was different from the higher end models and of course a little bit cheaper. Uh, I have literally read every single article that has the word Brad Gillis in it trying to figure out exactly what this guitar is. And I still don't really know. It doesn't really have a model name. The other ones have model names. This one doesn't. There were some prototype ones that were sold that didn't sign the headstock. Um, those are called the prototypes. Some people believe these are considered the prototypes. Uh, it seemed more people disagree with that than people that agree. So we signed the headstock. Now, if you don't know, I want to talk about the neck a little bit on this thing. His main guitar, Bubba, is a 62 Fender Strat that he painted with car paint. So this neck is huge. It's like a baseball bat. It's kind of cool to pick up. And actually, I've said this is a guilty pleasure guitar. I don't play it nearly as much as I should. I actually have it on this dorky little display in my room in front of the case with my Night Ranger backstage pass and a Kelly Keggy drumstick. Um, so I don't play it a whole ton, but the neck actually doesn't feel half bad, even though it's a lot bigger than I'm used to. It's blacked out, which I think is just super cool. It's super cheesy, but this is, I mean, it's a shredder guitar. They're supposed to look cheesy. Bright red, black neck, it really doesn't get any better than that. Uh, the pickups on it are just no-name pickups. It's not like the signature PJ Marks he used back in the day. Uh, just kind of no-name Fernandez pickups. Super high output, of course, and they can be even more, more high output with this little switch here. Uh, that's an active gain boost. And I'll try to get it up close here. There's a little hole here. You can stick a screwdriver in there and adjust the amount of gain that it's pushing out. Um, so up is on, down is off. and your jack up front is there. <laughs> this is so nerdy, but I think it's so cool. You notice on the bottom of the guitar, there's a second jack. No, this guitar doesn't have a piezo. Uh, that jack bypasses the active boost, so you can just plug it in like a normal guitar. Now, his 62, right where this active boost is, the Fernandez active boost, which by the way, sounds really good, um, is a wireless system. It's a Nady wireless system, and there's not really any reason why the uh, lower end models received a gain boost instead of a wireless system. My guess is because they can't just give everybody a wireless receiver. Uh, and by now those wireless receivers would be outdated and you couldn't even use them anymore. So that's why I think they gave you an active gain boost. <clears throat> now, how did I come to be the owner of this guitar? Well, quarantine days, I was just sitting on the couch and every once in a great while, and this is such a freaking coincidence, I type in Brad Gillis on Reverb. He's, if if I'm not talking about Van Halen, I'm talking about Night Ranger. I love Brad Gillis and Night Ranger. One of my all-time favorite bands, if not my all-time favorite band. They are right below Van Halen for me. Um, so I happened to type in Brad Gillis and like a few hours earlier, this guitar was posted. Had a pretty high price tag on it, but a lot lower than like the higher end models. I got really excited. I put it on my watch list and I was like, well, I'll just see how much it, see how much it sells for. I know I knew damn well I was going to try to buy this guitar. Started messaging the guy. This guitar's had a lot of repairs to it. Uh, one of the tone pots has been resoldered. Uh, the active boost has been repaired. Uh, the biggest here is the post broke through and it was fixed with wood epoxy. Uh, but other than that, it's completely stock, which is super cool. Uh, the only thing they did different is usually the 9 volts uh, kept under the pick guard here. They removed it to the back plate for easier battery change. Uh, that 9 volts for the active boost. So this guitar became my life. Looking at this guitar and negotiating with the guy, I kind of felt like a jerk. I was really needy, needed a lot of pictures. Um, it was an expensive guitar. So... <laughs>
it was probably a week and a half of me staring at this car, waking up, hoping it was there. One morning I woke up, someone had made an offer. I was like, oh, please just be sold so I can be done with this. Uh, but we ended up working out a deal. I'm not gonna talk about the guy's reverb shop. I'm not gonna turn this into a negative video. Um, the guitar did not come in the condition described. It's pretty beat up, it's had some touch-ups on it. I wasn't worried about that. Uh, a lot of the pit guard screws are stripped out and re-drilled. Let's try to keep my cool. Um, big thing is the guy made sure to mention the frets were in great shape. The frets are horrendous on this thing. I've had this guitar for about three, four months now, which is, I haven't made a video till now because I plan on getting a refret done on it. Just kind of waiting for the right time um, with everything going on in the world. But I really just wanted to make the video because I'm, I'm still so geeked about it. The guy ended up, he was very, very cool. He refunded me what, uh, what we agreed was fair for the refret and the undisclosed damages. Um, and we moved on. I almost returned it. I was very close to returning it just because, like I said, the frets are pretty bad. You know, I'm not going to show close-ups. I'm not going to, I'm not going to turn this into a negative video because I still own one of my dream guitars. Uh, I will say I'm very happy that the guy, uh, realized his mistake and refunded me a fair amount. I, I'm very happy for that. I thank him a lot for that. You know, I wish he would have been upfront about everything, but that's how it is. So it got shipped to me. I was super geeked in the original case. One other cool thing is this has the old school fender truss rods. You got to take the neck off to make adjustments. Ain't that cool? That's not a pain at all. <laughs> So that is my Brad Gillis signature model. I can't tell you guys how geeked I am to own this thing. Like I said, I keep it on a dorky little display and every day I just look at it and I'm like, how the hell do I own one of these? You know, I remember when I first found out who Brad Gillis was and knowing that he had signature guitars, I was like, I'll never own one. And now I do, and I'm very excited. One other extremely dorky thing I did, I got a snakeskin strap because that's what Brad uses. This originally came with Dunlop strap locks and they're in the case. It just didn't have the buttons for the strap. So I'm keeping an eye out for a vintage set of Dunlops, uh, just the parts for the strap and I'll put the originals back on. Uh, I just put a set of Daddario uh, strap locks on because I had a set lying around. Uh, so that is my Brad Gillis Fernandez guitar. What a cool guitar to own. Uh, my overall thoughts of the guitar, it plays pretty good. The electronics are decent for the money. I don't know how much these were new. I think I've seen around like the eight to 800 to 1,000 mark. Uh, the Trem's gotta go. I'm keeping a lookout for a good deal on a prototype style. The Trem sucks. Uh, these came with a variety of trims. This one, the Head Crashers, uh, stuff like that. Uh, but I have this style. I'll show some close-ups of it as well. Uh, it's not so hot, but you know, it's not bad once you get it in tune. It's kind of like a Floyd Rose special. Uh, I think another reason for the tuning stability is I have it set up like Brad's guitar where he has it kind of dipped down at an angle because his guitar isn't made for a Floyd Rose. So that's what I did with it just to, as a cool little thing, tribute to, tribute to the guitar or whatever you want to call it. So I am super geeked about this and I want to answer one question. No, it's not for sale. Uh, I've teased this a little bit on my Instagram. I did a YouTube video, I'll link it up below, of me playing Sister Christian with this guitar. I didn't really say anything. Uh, and I already had people reaching out, you know, wanting to buy it. It's not for sale, probably never will be. Said that about a lot of guitars, but this is, this was a bucket list guitar. And even if I don't play it a lot, I think I'm just gonna be selfish and keep this one around. Um, yeah, super, super cool guitar. Anyway, guys, 
that's pretty much going to do it for this video. Thanks for tuning in and just, just geeking out with me. This is a really cool guitar. I'm definitely going to try to use it in some videos. Uh, some Night Ranger or Ozzy Osbourne influenced videos, of course. And uh, I'm happy the, the jig is up. You guys know I own this guitar. I can display it in the back now. I've been keeping it upstairs in my room just so nobody saw it. Uh, but I figured it was time to show you guys this guitar. All right, guys, that's going to do it for today's video. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, throw a thumbs up on this video, and any comments, throw them down below. See you guys later.